In this video, we're going to be talking about the WYSIWYG editor for Drupal 8 and how you can customize it for your site. So first of all, what's a WYSIWYG editor? WYSIWYG stands for what you see is what you get, and it's the editor that appears for long form text on your Drupal site. This WYSIWYG editor is called the CK editor, and it was available for Drupal 7, but now in Drupal 8, it's provided in core out of the box. Out of the box, you have two configurations of the WYSIWYG editor, one for full HTML and another for basic HTML. We can see that basic HTML is simpler, it has fewer buttons, and it doesn't allow you to add any type of HTML. There are certain HTML tags that will be stripped out. So you might decide that you want to change the configuration for these two editors. So how can you do that? So we can head over in our site to the configuration section under configuration, content authoring, text formats, and editors. So I'm going to open that up in a new tab and we'll take a look together. So first of all, I noticed that basic HTML appears at the top. Basic HTML is a text format and it's the default text format because it appears at the top of the list. Full HTML is third in place and I can configure that as well. Restricted HTML, uh, which, will, which will strip out additional HTML elements. This doesn't have an editor associated with it, so if I pick restricted HTML, I don't get a WYSIWYG editor at all. And then finally, there's the plain text format, which doesn't allow HTML at all. So let's start off just by looking at the basic HTML configuration. So I'm going to click Configure over on the right. One thing you'll notice right away about the basic HTML text format is that there are a limited list of HTML tags that you can actually use. So basic HTML means that you don't have access to all the HTML tags. Instead, you have a list of a white list of HTML tags that are allowed, and anything else would be excluded. So this is going to exclude things like iframes and script tags, and it, it'll mean that you can't embed things like videos into the content. So up at the top in the toolbar configuration, we can add additional buttons to the editor. And I'll just suggest a couple things that you might want to add. First of all, I like to add the paste from Word option. This provides some cleanup of content pasted from external documents. So we can drag that in to one of the groups. Another one that I like to use is this maximize button, which allows editors to maximize the text area to take up the full screen. And that's really useful for long form content because it just makes it easier to see all the text that's included in the field. So I'm going to make these little updates. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and I'm going to save the configuration. Now if I go back to this page and I refresh and I select basic HTML, I'm going to see those extra buttons added in. So that's basic HTML. Full HTML is this other option down here. We can configure it. And right away, you're going to see that there's more buttons available. We'll also see if we scroll down to the text format options that there's no restriction on the HTML tags that are used. So one thing that you might want to use here that's a little more advanced is this styles button. So I'm going to pull that into one of these groups. Sometimes it's a little sticky. For the styles dropdown, you have this configuration here, which allows you to specify HTML tags and CSS classes to be added to the uh, editor when you select the option from the dropdown. So how does that work? I'll show you an example. So let's say I wanted to add a heading tag H2 with the class special. And the label that I want to provide in the dropdown is special heading. So 
So I can save that configuration. And now if I go back to my article, and I'm editing with full HTML, in the Styles dropdown, I'm going to be able to select Special Heading. Now if I, if I click on the Source button, it's going to show me that the H2 tag was added and the class Special was added as well. So you can see that making updates to the WYSIWYG editors on your site, the basic HTML and the full HTML options, it's really easy. But you are probably wondering why we have two WYSIWYG editors and two text formats in the first place. Why do we need to have basic HTML and full HTML? Well, the reason is because we have different types of users on our Drupal site. You might have different roles with some being able to have access to full HTML and some who you want to restrict access so they can only use basic HTML. So to see how that plays out, we'll just take a quick look at the permissions for Drupal. So under People Permissions, I'm going to open up this in a new tab. And if I scroll down to the filter section of this page, I can see that there's permissions for using basic, full, and restricted HTML formats. So currently, authenticated users have permission to use basic HTML, but not full HTML. So going back to our text formats and editors, when you're creating content in Drupal, the default editor that's used is going to be basic HTML. That's what's at the top of the list here. If I want to make full HTML the default, I'll have to pull this up to the top of the list. The thing to keep in mind is that whatever the default is here, that's probably what's going to get used for most of your content. Most people writing content on your site aren't going to think to change this setting. That means that if most of the editors on your site have access to full HTML, and full HTML is the default, that's going to work well. Most of your content is going to have that text format, and it's going to be uh, accessible by most of the people editing content. You're going to run into issues if some of your editors only have permission to use basic HTML, because they won't be able to edit content if full HTML has been selected as the text format. So that's just something to be careful of if you think that you're going to have editors who only have permission to use basic HTML, you'll probably want to keep that as the default so that they'll be able to edit more content on the site. One last thing that I want to show you is a module called Allowed Formats. Allowed Formats is useful if you want to have certain text formats that are available for certain fields on your site and not others. This can help resolve problems when not all content editors have access to use all the text formats. So just to show you a quick demo, what this module does is it allows you to edit for each field which formats will be allowed. So that means which formats are going to show up in the dropdown. So for example, if I have event editors on my site who only have access to basic HTML, I can set basic HTML as the only allowed format for the event body field. And this will resolve any conflicts between the text format set for the content and the text formats that the users have permission to edit. So in this case, if I select basic HTML and save the settings, and then I go back to my content, I'll see that now basic HTML is the only option available.